Ladies and gentlemen, as we gather here today, it is with great enthusiasm and conviction that I address you on behalf of Van Life Peers, a platform that embodies the spirit of creative freedom and empowerment in the digital age. In recent times, we've witnessed a seismic shift in the way content creators interact with their audiences and monetize their work. Traditional platforms, once heralded as bastions of creativity, have increasingly become gatekeepers, dictating the terms of engagement and stifling the voices of individual creators. In our ever-evolving digital landscape, the question of value has undergone a profound transformation. No longer is success measured solely by profit, but by streams, likes, views, and followers. This shift from revenue-based valuation to the prominence of artificial benchmarks as a metric of worth, as eloquently articulated by American media theorist, writer, columnist, lecturer, graphic novelist, and documentarian Douglas Rushkoff, has ushered in a new era where abstract metrics reign supreme, often overshadowing true economic indicators. Rushkoff's analysis unveils the inherent flaws in this paradigm. In the pursuit of likes and streams, companies prioritize popularity over profitability, sacrificing sustainable growth for fleeting acclaim. As Rushkoff astutely points out, the obsession with accumulating likes has permeated every aspect of our economy, from music streaming platforms to social media giants. It is in response to this growing need for change that Van Life Peers was born. Founded on the principles of transparency, autonomy, and inclusivity, Van Life Peers offers a refreshing alternative to the status quo and seeks to revolutionize the way creators connect with their audiences and monetize their content. Unlike mainstream platforms that siphon earnings and stifle creative freedom while prioritizing likes and algorithms, Van Life Peers puts creators first, providing them with direct access to their audience and complete control over their content. Our platform is built on the pillars of transparency and fairness. We eschew the artificial benchmarks of streams, likes, and algorithms, instead prioritizing revenue and findability. We believe that true value lies not in artificial metrics, but in the tangible support and financial rewards that creators receive for their work. That is why, at the heart of our platform, lies a commitment to empowering creators. Through direct transactions and enhanced visibility, we provide creators with the tools and resources they need to thrive in today's digital landscape. By fostering a community where creators can thrive on their own terms, Van Life Peers embodies the true spirit of the digital age, a spirit grounded in authenticity, integrity, and innovation. But our mission extends beyond empowering individual creators. We envision a future where the digital economy works for everyone, not just a select few. Through partnerships with film and television talent, entertainment productions, and live performances, Van Life Peers seeks to democratize access to the arts through its subscription-based model and innovative talent attachment agreements bringing diverse voices and perspectives to the forefront of our cultural landscape. In a world dominated by abstract metrics and fleeting trends, Van Life Peers stands as a testament to the enduring power of creativity and community. Together, let us embark on a journey towards a more equitable and sustainable digital future, one where value is measured not by streams and likes, but by the impact we make on the world around us. Thank you. In the original dot-com era, companies were measured by how much money they made. The idea was that you sold a lot of stuff and took in a lot of cash, and that was the way you could get a valuation and then get acquired or do an IPO. Now, consumers don't have money anymore. People are poor. So companies can't really use revenue as a way of showing what they're worth. Plus, they have no real business plans. So what they do instead 
is use likes as a metric of their worth. If a company can have a lot of people saying, I like it, I like it, I like it, then that more ethereal, abstract metric, I've got a million likes, I've got 20 million likes, that becomes marketable. So if I want to sell a record and make money and go to a record company or a CD company, I can show, look, my song on YouTube has 500,000 likes. And the record company or the sponsor will then promote my music, not even because they're going to make money with that music, but because then I'm supposed to sell my likes, my views, my followers to their sponsors. So a guy like Jay-Z comes out with an album through Samsung that he gives away for free because what it really did was installed spyware on people's uh, on people's Android phones that could see what they were doing. So what Jay-Z was doing was rather than selling his music, he was selling his likes. A company like Tumblr had no revenue, but they had lots of likes and users who all clicked on each other's stuff. They had those phantom metrics, and with that, they were able to sell themselves for a billion dollars. This year, Yahoo is taking Tumblr, the billion dollars, as a loss. They're writing the whole thing off because they didn't buy a company. They bought likes. But this is the new economy that we're in. It's an abstracted, absurd, essentially meaningless economy. All of these companies, Facebook, Twitter, Google, they're all advertising based. They're all market research based. The idea is that these companies will somehow replace advertising and marketing and market research and consumer data. The problem is all those industries combined never account for more than three or four percent of GDP. They can't because if advertising becomes the majority of your marketplace, who's left to advertise? You know, if my talks are supposed to advertise my books and my books are supposed to advertise my TV appearances and my TV appearances are supposed to advertise my books, where's the revenue? You know, that's the problem in our society now is that every company now is a data play or an advertising play. But how can the whole NASDAQ stock exchange be one big advertising play? It can't. You still need enough razor blades and bananas and milk companies to support all of that stuff. So it, it won't support the entire economy. So that's why we don't really use revenue anymore in playing this out. The bottom layer of the Ponzi scheme, which is what we're in now, where these companies are still trying to get shareholder value and IPOs on Wall Street, this bottom layer is made up completely of likes. It's made up not of the revenue that the companies make, but the amount of likes, the amount of traffic, the amount of data they can show. But if your company's end game is what they call a big data play, that all oh, the data we collect is gonna be so valuable, you've already lost. Everybody's collecting data. The one thing that there is a glut of is data. So that's not what you wanna be trying to collect right now. Most business people, whether they're in investment banking or whether they're the hungry little startup people, they are so oblivious to the operating system beneath their technologies that they end up really driving their businesses off cliffs. And all I'm asking people to do, if, especially if they're programmers, especially if they're developers, to look and say, wait a minute, what am I optimizing my business for? Am I optimizing it for the extraction of value from people and places, which is a losing proposition, or am I optimizing it to promote the circulation of value between people and places, which is a winner's game. The whole point of a digitally distributed economy is that it's networked, it's distributed. You don't redistribute the spoils after the fact. You don't say, oh, I've made too much money, I'm gonna give back 90% of it now before I die into all the schools and things I think need it. No, that means you've had an extractive, silly, sick business, which let you get hundreds of billions of dollars, but killed your marketplaces, destroyed public areas, destroyed the planet. You know, there are three factors of production. Adam Smith, everyone's known this. Land, labor, and capital. In the current VC-driven technology startup marketplace, the only one of those three that we value is capital. 
the VC makes all the decisions, and land and labor are left out of the equation. That's why we have zillions of unemployed people and why we're destroying the planet. It's really simple where if we include land and labor, the places where we do our business and the people through whom we do our business, if we include them in the value equation, all of a sudden business is positive rather than a net negative on our society.